Hi, thank you for watching Kanika Minolta's video. Last year, we have invested 77 million euros in the new plant, which introduced unique roll-to-roll -roll manufacturing method having much higher productivity and lower cost in batch method. And this year, we developed a unique application, OLED Tulip. We believe our decision will be the one of the important achievements for OLED industries. Before getting to the agenda, I'd like to share some of our background. Kanika Minolta was originally founded as a company which manufactured photographic materials and cameras. Our main field of technologies are materials, nanofabrication, optics, and imaging. With these assets, we have been developing OLED for more than 10 years. In 2011, we commercialized OLED lighting panels using all phosphorescent emitters for the first time in the world. As you know, the efficiency of phosphorescent OLED can potentially be much higher than that of fluorescent. In 2013, we exhibit paper-like thin and lightweight flexible OLED. In 2014, we announced its outstanding achievement of the highest luminescence efficiency. And now we focus on flexible OLED lighting. Here's a list of approaches we take. Uh, there's many things I'd like to talk about. Um, I picked three things because of the time limitations. First, I'd like to introduce our roll-to-roll -roll manufacturing. Second, um, I'd like to talk about light extraction technology. And finally, ultra-low resistance transparent electrode. This is a picture of our roll-to-roll -roll mass production factory. It is located in Yamanashi Prefecture, which is about three hours from central Tokyo. And I just checked Google Map, but I couldn't find the picture, so maybe at the time you see this video, it may be on it. Um, another thing I like to highlight is the production capacity. Uh, we can produce 100 million panels per month. This is quite a lot, isn't it? advantage of our OLED panels coming out from this roll-to-roll -roll manufacturing is that um, it's flexible. Of course, it has to be flexible to roll it up. And the radius is 10 millimeter. And then um, thinness is another thing I like to mention. It's thin as 0.35 millimeter. And then it's very light. Like as a feather on the picture, the weight is 0.06 gram per square centimeter. With these features, we can create a market or application which LED will have a hard time entering. Not only white colored, but we can also produce color tunable panels. The panel has wide color reproduction and many intermediate colors can be also produced. Furthermore, its uniformity of brightness is so high. And surprisingly, the thinness and the weight is the just same as the white colored OLED. Isn't it great? Another special feature of this production line is that you can draw a pattern on the panel and when you turn it off, the pattern will completely disappear. And the resolution, uh, the line can be thin as your hair. And one thing I would like you to remember is that only the lighting area is consuming energy. Well, thanks to the advantages, we came up with many, 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 many applications with these features. These are just few examples. 
like aircraft, building materials, automobile, illumination, and electric indicator. This is one of example of our new application, OLED Tulip. This tulip was sold to Japanese famous theme park, House Tembus. 5,000 OLED tulips was displayed, so there are 15,000 panels total because there are three panels each in it. If you have a chance, I would like you to visit. OLED tulips will welcome you with red, yellow, and white colored. It also blinks with music. Oh wait, but by the time you see this video, the, the event is over. But maybe next year. Many of viewers are interested on the technology we use, right? Well, don't worry, we have it on the presentation. It is quite important to improve the luminous efficiency for lighting applications because it is strictly linked to power consumption. As you know, lumen per watt is expressed in this equation. So we can take four strategies to achieve high efficiency like this. Optimization of spectrum, improvement of internal quantum efficiency, outcoupling enhancement in lower driving voltage. Among them, Especially the improvement of outcoupling enhancement is so important for higher efficiency. In this section, I would like to talk about this technology. Due to optical property differences of each layer, there are optical losses in the device. This chart is mode distribution example in a typical white OLED. We can see only air mode as a visible light and the others result in optical losses. So we have to enhance the air mode energy because the air mode is only 21%. It means as many as about 80% of emission energy was optical loss. That's why we need to develop light extraction technology. There are four kinds of loss mode, which are plasmon, waveguide, absorption, and substrate mode. We took three approaches to this last mode. From now on, I'm going to talk about internal light extraction technology. Since a large amount of light was trapped in the OLED device, the light coupling extraction become a critical factor to improve the light efficiency. In order to maximize the efficiency, we took a new structure. Optical losses are due to large difference of reflectance index between transparent electron and substrate. Actually, the index of the electrode is not less than 1.8, and that of the glass substrate is about 1.5. There is at least 0.3 index gap between them. The index gap could generate total reflection, which makes optical losses. Critical angles exist due to the large difference of reflective index. That's why we introduce internal scattering layers to extract the trapped light inside the OLED. The internal scattering layer is named IES which is standing for extracting structures to extract the trap light in the device. IES consists of two stack layers. The first layer is scattering layer which has a high reflective index, optical transparent matrix material, and scattering particles having a different reflective index with matrix. The second layer is smoothing layer. As shown in these figures, in order to keep the bias fabrication process stably, we applied smoothing layer above internal scattering layer, which has the same index, so no worry to generate optical loss. Consequently, IES has smooth surface, which is only one nanometer surface roughness at RA value. 
To optimize the light extraction structure, the simulation using FDTD method was originally applied to develop the technology. We assumed FDTD model from this information and modified it to our, uh, the more effective way. Then we tried to find a better light extraction structure by changing parameters. As a result, we obtained the optimal structure. What you see here is result of wide OLED device performance on glass substrate incorporated with IES technology. 139 lumens per watt was achieved by introducing new structure. This is the world record still now as May 2015. About twofold improvement was obtained compared to the panel without IES. Now, we are developing the next generation IES for plastic substrate. Let's move on to the next topic, ultra low resistance transparent electrode to make the panel size larger. The uniformity of brightness mostly depends on the panel size and the sheet resistance of transparent electrode. As you know, ITO dominates the position of electrode now. However, there are limitations for ITO because of the lack of the resistance. I mean, you have to be low resistance to make it all bigger. So we require low resistance transparent electrode. This graph shows the potential of typical electrode to replace ITO. Each electrode is classified with cost and conductivity. Desirable zone is upper left side in which electro has higher conductivity and low cost than ITO. We think metal grid will be the most promising choice. This is a typical structure of OLED panel using a metal grid. First, silver grid line are formed on plastic substrate with printing technology. Next, the grid is covered with transparent conductive layer, and then OLED layers are stacked. Finally, it is encapsulated. There are two critical issues about this metal grid. One is the surface roughness. If the surface roughness is insufficient, it could cause a decrease in reliability of the panel due to the leakage of current. Another is trade-off between low resistivity and damage on plastic substrate. To solve these issues, our approach is, is to develop uh, low sintering nanosilver ink and no damage process for plastic substrate. To compare the characteristics of metal grid, we selected three types of silver nano inks. Here is the ink injection process. We use Konica and Minolta's inkjet head. The droplet size is 4 picoliter. First, liquid tank was filled with dummy ink. And then, replaced with cleanup solvent three times. Third, um, it was replaced with silver nano ink three times. Fourth, ink was injected on substrate. And finally, the ink on the substrate was heated and sintered. As well as the choice of the ink, heating and sintering process is also important to determine the quality of the grid. We developed a unique method of heating and sintering for the silver nano ink. With the unique method, we could improve the volume resistivity and surface roughness. Now, I will show you the result of the ink choice. Here's the resistivity of the grid. Ink C has the best property among three inks. The resistivity achieved 2.5 or lower than bulk value without any damage on plastic substrate. Not only the low resistance, but also Ink-C had the best property of surface roughness. 
So of course, we chose ink C for OLED device fabrication. With ink C and unique centering method, we produce prototype OLED panels. First, silver grid was made on a plastic substrate with inkjet technology. Second, the grid was heated and centered. Third, it was covered with transparent conductive layer and then we put OLED layers. Fifth, it was covered with reflective electrode. And finally, it was encapsulated. This is a picture of emitting status. As you can tell from this picture, the uniformity of the brightness is so high. Surprisingly, there was no issues for durability of the panel using silver grid. Because of the good surface roughness of the grid, even after 300 hours storage at the high temperature, no dark spot was found in the panel. Well, of course, in order to improve the performance of the grid farther, we're always developing and also looking for the new materials and process. This is the last slide of presentation, and I'd like to summarize. First, we've talked about construction of world's first roll-to-roll -roll manufacturing line for plastic OLED, and it have started producing last year. For the technology side, I mean R&D, we've achieved the highest efficiency in the world. We've also succeeded in producing prototype of plastic substrate OLED using a printed electrode. Our next challenge is to apply this technology to mass production line and we're looking forward to showing you the next generation flexible OLED with the highest efficiency and largest size. Konica Minota believes that the flexible OLED lighting will change the way of the light. Thank you so much for watching the video and I hope to see you in person soon. See you!